Hello everybody, welcome to CCL Season 54, first round match between Agralius and his Vampires and Totor Frias and his Chaos. Um, inducement wise, Totor Frias has an Apothecary. Um, he's only got 11 players, so that's a pretty decent shout because there is a Mighty Blow and a Dirty Player on the Vampire team. And uh, this started about an hour ago. No, did it? No. Some amount of time ago, not an hour ago. Some amount of time ago, so we are catching up via replay, and then at some point it may well turn into a live match. Um, so yeah, 14 players for Gralius. This crazy edge six bludger, amazing. Uh, move up bludger, only one tackle, which was its big weakness in the first round matchup against the Dark Elves, but now uh, it's only the ball carrier. As dodge, but this is the thing, right? This is the thing of vampires. I like of multiple tackles because you're all are getting the ball off, off, off whoever it is, right? And to do that, you probably need tackle. So, um, so I do like having multiple tacklers. There is only one. So that is still a bit of a weakness, only having the one tackle, even though there's only one dodge to go for. Um, Tackle ma rackle the crabs Mandy. I gave my flatmates <laughs> were the best crabs you could ever get, okay? <laughs> yep. Um, so there's a, a Tackle Pommer, Tackle Claw Pommer, and a Rackle Mighty. So two really good players, like obviously one to kill Vamps and one to get Vamps down. That's pretty nice. Uh, full Claw Pommer here, but no Tackle. Warriors aren't great, eh? This is a rookie. Block guard and two miss necks. I guess he got a bit beaten up in his previous round match. That's why he's got a, a uh, loner and an apple. I can't remember who, who Total Free has played in the first round. Tackle set on the wall. Outrageous. So I like, I like this just because I don't like not getting the extra assist here unless that's a beast man. No. Get, just get an extra assist in right now. You're not, you're not that much better over here, right? You're not that much better over here that it's worth not getting an extra assist. Um, but yeah, I think that's definitely the right play, right? You've, you've got more players. Okay, you are going to eat your own. He's got claw pom. But I think the fact he's only got 11, even with two apples, I think you just start fouling to... Uh, you know, you can actually outbash this. You can actually outbash this Chaos team with a bit of luck. I guess there is an, there is the problem of like to drop. You'd much rather foul the claw pommer, the tackle claw pommer, and now you've lost your DP. So there's not, he's not incentivized to not pile on anymore. Like it was a great deterrent, wasn't it? Yeah, dirty player. So that's one way where I would have gone, either, either the Elliot way or the, or the Ducky way there, with regarding fouling. I've been baptized in my own sweat. <laughs> <laughs> Mighty blow hit comes in. And removal. I guess he just holds the middle there. He can punch things. He can punch things. Gears there. Though actually, you want to gears the uh, warriors more, don't you? Gets the push. <laughs> Anyone rooting for the KSA eh, should be banned. I mean, yeah, so like, obviously nothing personal. For either Agrelius or Toto Frias, but um, yeah, chaos, brainless killer of teams versus vampires, the thinking man's, uh, you know, heroic underdog team. But um, so yeah, any neutrals 
naturally going to be on the side of the vamps. Unless you just like th to kill things, right? Like, you know, maybe uh, maybe Mr. Page and Calcium are on the side of the chaos. Kill, kill things. Dead, dead, dead. You know, who knows? Obviously, ball is going to be hittable every single turn because uh, there's an Edge Six guy <laughs> and there's Hypnotic Gazes. So, Total Freeze is trying to, like, you know, generate some contact, but in between assists and gazes. Um, this can be pretty good for Aquarius just fighting. And he is, he's doing the right thing. Just just beating off the chaos. See. Of course, in Blood Bowl 2020, he could not use the stand firm here. So, if this was a block, can't use the, any of these skills uh, in Blood Bowl 2020. So, if this was like a block throw, he would have just knocked him down and the both down. Or if he was, uh, if he didn't have block, he could have pushed away the stand firm guy. So that's an interesting, interesting little tidbit about Blood Bowl 2020 there. <laughs> <laughs> indeed, physics, indeed. I enjoyed it though. I enjoyed that little line. The best was Elliot the other day when he said uh, he, he had he had twenty twenty necromantic team, <laughs> and he just really like he totally like totally uh, totally. Um, I can't think of the word. Wow, reroll comes in there. Like totally genuinely like <laughs> what's what's the word like deadpan the deadpan delivery goes he goes uh, if 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 we still got the wraith as a scoring threat if anything goes wrong <laughs> it was so good it was literally so good yeah it turns out block and wrestle yeah every every skill except stuff like thick skull and and things like that. Nope. The gaze is in, so we're going looking at some twos to hit the ball with tackle. Gets him. And gets the removal. Every skill except the ones it doesn't, yeah. So skills that have can be used even if the even if the player is prone or had their tackle zone removed. Those skills it doesn't get rid of, which are things like regen, thick skull, uh, foul appearance. Oh! I mean, you do want him in range, right? You're doing a double GFI, so he's in range. To score next turn. Flip me. Where he says, so. yeah, there's, there's a, <laughs> there's a, what's it called? What was um, Gadenik's vampire team was called Penetrating Gaze, which is really good. And uh, <laughs> Elliot the other day, unrelated to uh, vampires, said Avert Your Gaze, <laughs> which I thought was something else that could be, uh, could be something. Oh, makes the dodge. Gets the Rackle knockdown. Oh. So he's got the ball, but again, like, it's just really... Oh, God, you can... What you can do here is just chain him onto it and stuff, can't you? Oh, except he's got the... So yeah, so now like in 2020 he'd lose he'd lose uh he'd lose wrestle there, so you could just block him down. So 
so yep, these are both gone. But, like, it's sick, isn't it? Vampires are sick doing shit like this. Absolutely sick. Multiple gears uh, opens up a lot of holes. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow, fails the two plus. Fails the two plus gears. Diced. Nah, it's just unbelievable, isn't it? I, the, the, you know, multiple gears is ridiculous. There's no defense against it, basically. There's no defense against multiple gears. <laughs> yeah, I mean, skilled up vamps are like are actually fun, right? When they work, but e even skilled up vamps that have this like that have this potential can still chew through their own team really, really quickly, right? So, um, oh, huge one day power. Full power and an AV break. Unbelievable. <laughs> I'm not surprised, I'm just pointing out uh, I'm just pointing out how effective <laughs> it is. Oh. Gridis has been pretty lucky on not needing a uh, like uh, bloodlust, right? I don't think he's failed a bloodlust at all yet. And I did wonder if, uh, like, he was blitzing without tackle, right? So I wondered if he could have tried to free up a uh, wrestler somehow. <laughs> insanity diced. <laughs> or insanity dicked. <laughs> I don't know if that was on purpose or by accident. <laughs> so, Toto Frias not content, or maybe content with beating off the uh, vampires, is now going to try and get a li nice little breakaway here. Does the 2 2 2 instead of the 3? Oh! Gets the catch! He's away! Escape to victory! He needs 1 GFI? No, he needs 2. Oh! Ah, okay, he's got him there. Oh, amazing. Amazing. But can gaze him. <gasps> and now he finally fails. Now he finally fails the bloodlust. But it's okay, because it gives him a chance of getting him. Oh. Oh. So now he can go and try and bloodlust. Oh, but he's he's rolled a one. Reroll has to come in. So now he can guess him and rolls another one. And somehow, somehow, after being under the cosh for the entire half, Toto Frias gets the breakaway and gets the touchdown. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. But you know what? And it was the tackle, right? The tackle cost him, I guess. The, the lack of proper Saka there. Um, it came in for that hit with just a rookie vamp instead of, like, you know, tackle or frenzy or pro or anything. Like, there was nothing, just a straight-up 2D. But that is unbelievable to get that breakaway against vamps like that. Unbelievable. Perfect eight turn stall. Yeah, basically chaos diaper. Oh wow, big KO. Mmm, daka daka. Wow, that was unbelievable. That was like a rope-a-dope, wasn't it? Basically, you know, he just... He just got... 
<laughs> beaten up for the entire half, like under massive pressure, and then just somehow, somehow got away with it in the end. Chaos on 10 for the second half currently. Wamps. 11. And crucially, the Arch 6 is out. Um, I mean, he rolled that badly, didn't he, Daly? I, I don't know what the correct play would have been. Like, if he just hadn't bloodlusted on the first one, then it was pretty easy, right? Just draws that guy and off you go. But, um... Hard to say what the exact best turn would have been. I'd have to pay attention. <laughs> he did roll a lot of ones. Like, with how many ones he rolled, he probably fails, no matter what he does there. No, I won't give in I until I'm time. victorious, and I will defend. Whoa. I will defend. Do you want a recording of me saying "foo w w w w a a a r r"? I mean, first of all, thank you very much, Goliath, for staying fantastic for nearly twelve who will be your pregnancies. And second of all, sure. <laughs> 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 right, needs this Edge 6 band back. Does he get him? He doesn't. Oh, flip me. And the Beastmen come back. So it's 11 v 11. Wonder if he should have appled that KO, eh? Obviously easy to say now after he's failed two KOs. But that's the thing, right? You, you expect to get him back 75% of the time. But, like, the apple isn't as good on on vamps, is it? Because you've got region on you guys anyway. And, like, nobody wants to nobody wants to apple a throw. Way hey, physics. <laughs> this is still okay for the vamps, right? They can still try and score somewhat early, somewhat quick score. Um, really, any amount of turns, they just want to, they just want to score. Vamps don't particularly want to score in like two or three, right? They just want to, they just want to score at any point. Like the, the scoring is the hard part for the Vamps. They, they don't really care about stalling it, and they don't really care about scoring quickly. They just, just get the score any way you can, <laughs> and you've got a chance to turn over the opponent. It is funny though how much tackle the uh, chaos. Oh, there's a Kaz. Journeyman, so no apple. Three day now if he follows. Yeah. Oh, moving him there so it's still three D even if he bloodless. No, you hit, hit first. Don't really know what he's over there. Yeah, interesting putting him there. I don't think he was really needed there. Oh, I guess he goes there, so they're not only... So if you fail the pickup, you bite him. Yeah, okay. Okay, now I understand. I was like, I'd rather have him further up the field if I failed Bloodlust, but... Yeah, that's... Covers the failed pickup there as well.
No, it's so, it's so that the vamp doesn't run off the field without, without the ball, right? Because if you pick it up, you want to move there. So having him here would be better, but it's if you fail the pick up, you can still bite him. Uh, the edge six is on the bench. He's been, he's been KO'd. Failed to recover twice. And the beast, the chaos. I don't think we're in an inducement war. I just think they got wrecked last game because they've only got two warriors and a uh, journeyman beastman. So. Yes, and there is no world in that six. Vamp is fighting in just more. He'll be the last. He'll be the last vamp on your team, <laughs> basically. He's the attrition blitzer as well, so he's lost all the mighty blow hits for this guy. Might as well blitz with their uh, thralls now, right? For obviously less risky and uh, as wrestle. Who won last? Um, the high elves there. One on kicks in an absolute thriller. There's a good spoiler for the anybody watching these out of order on YouTube. And you're welcome. <laughs> but yeah, it was a great game. Really nice. Dodge the vamp through there. The problem is it just gets claw pummed. But I guess you're getting claw pummed anyway, aren't you? Like this one's getting claw pumped, so you have to kind of try and reinforce this guy. At least make it a bit. What I quite like is that this guy going to here, and then this guy going up to base the claw pummer just to just to eat eat the hit instead of a vampire. This is a lovely guy to claw up on, right? His only tackle. Cur palm. Shame that these are next to each other. If they weren't next, well. So, that, so this guy did something because he stops moving the guard in here. This, this would have been perfect, right? If he wasn't here, the guard goes in there. And then you can blitz from that corner, chain him into there, and then get him to hit him. Well. So yeah, we're live now. Caught up, so it will go a little bit slower. Do apologise. If you're on YouTube, of course, you can watch in double speed or whatever. After pile. Instant. Gets him off. The goat gets off the vampire. I think it's okay committing this guy. Like, obviously, you don't want to commit him, right? He's edge four bludge. But he's still tackle, and, like, you can support him with guard here, so this is a pretty decent square to put him in. <laughs> yeah, 
it's not. I mean, it's it's, it's completely fair to like not not want to engage. It. Like it might be better. It might be better there, right? Edge four blood tackle is a really good safety. A safety that Agralius could really have done with her. <laughs> Throw in an awkward spot, isn't it? He'd really love to uh, move him afterwards, but he's going to move him first and can't get anywhere. I guess he could block. This guy could block, and then he could go around, and it's not too bad. Got this throw, three, four, five, six. Move them, move them the furthest. Get this hit. And then you could go one, two, three, four, five, six. Get him round there, which is nice. And then blitz this guy and then move up this side. Both and go to there. Nice moving forward. Huh? Oof. Ball fully exposed as well, just quietly. Yeah, see, that, that's like a bit, a bit crap, in my opinion, moving him first, because he's the closest, right? You want to move the guy first. Oh, he's based, okay. <laughs> Disregard, I didn't say he was based, so, but this guy could have moved there and got a little bit, you know, and then he would have been moving first. Yeah, okay, I didn't see that guy with this. My bad. So now this guy can go one, two, three, four, five, six. Whereas the other one could have gone up to here, right? So it still, still, still matters. Those little extra squares can make all the difference, can't they? It's just, just giving yourself more options by moving through here. Even if you don't take the options. You know, they, this may well have been the best square for the throw. Unli unlikely that anybody picks the right square anyway. <laughs> even even people like Kfog. One, one across seems better, right? One across stops the hit on him. Brackets him just the same. I don't mind up here, but then he gets a three plus out. He's probably not going to take a three plus out. Is he going to blitz the thrall and then block him? Maybe. I'll just blitz this, blitz this fan. Blitzing a vamp with a claw bar every turn is a pretty good move, to be fair. Don't like having a cheer fight with this one, though. There we go. Pylon? Trend is actually a potato. <laughs> and that if you were to deep fry Trend, she would come out a nice crispy potato. <laughs> there you go. He didn't pile. Imagine not piling. Oh, man. Oh, that's a tragedy. It's bad enough watching them on replays when they don't pile, but when they do it live, it's just depressing. <laughs>
It's just, it's just depressing. I'm not piling. So maybe you could have moved him up to be a bite. Okay, he was a bite anyway. That's good enough, isn't it? And then he's got the score next turn with some dice. Lovely. It can even... Uh, Dodge this one the other side, can't you? Maybe do something. Just stand. Standing's fair, to be fair. Three plus without makes it four. I wonder if it's better to gaze or not. I just stay out. Stay out in front. Problem is, he can come in hard here, right? Which isn't. You don't want him. I kind of want this guy out in front to make it harder to attack the front. Like, this really strengthens attacking the back. I mean, the screen, but. Problem is, if he attacks the front, he lays off. Well, we shall see. If he'd piled, he might have just killed that one. Okay. Just quietly. Could pile that one. But then he's not. Interfering with the uh, cage, so yeah. Oof. Ooh, spicy. Surfing him could be an okay turn for Gradius. Gradius has just like not lost many people this drive, has he? What two? It's a pretty good drive, really. Three have been somewhat, well, four have been somewhat left behind. He's only got five up, but, um... This is a pretty good long drive so far. I mean, taking the score here is fine, right? 2D there, but it's him score. I think he needed this guy should have maybe gone around in front more somehow. Double G five for him. Yeah. That's pretty good. He does have that block there. He can also hit him, right? He can hit him. And then he can uh, block and then dodge through the bits and then dodge through here. That's probably what he does. Oh, he hasn't really 
you've got anyone down there though. Ah, oh, bleeding gears here. It still needs to power stand firm though. Get, oh, it doesn't get the pow. Does get the pow. So now he can come around to cancel this assist. He can block him. He can pow him. And then he can blitz him. And dodge through. I don't know, it's a bit ropey actually. Look at it now. <laughs> After using the reroll especially, maybe he just uh, comes back to midfield. Daka mentality. Yeah, I think he has to just come back. See, that, that's why I like this guy more in front, right? Like, he's got four players. <laughs> like, past where he would have been for me. Now, okay, he could have piled in harder around here. If he, if he put him where I wanted him, but uh, that's why I liked him there. Yeah, the, without the real, it's really... Really dodgy. I think just there. Uh, retreat. Still fine, right? Still got three turns after this. Actually, like, okay, it means he, he does have to go over time instead of uh, getting a turnover to win in normal time, but that's okay. He might just win the toss in overtime, and overtime gives him more chance to get his add six back. Seems to have been very lucky in the bloodlust, uh, Igralius. Only taken one send off, no cas. Normally, you'd have expected a few removals from bloodlust alone, never mind from the chaos. So he's led a charmed life in getting removed. He could have uh, surfed this throw. Might have been worth it. He does only have three vamps. Yeah, yeah. He's lost. He's lost two. Well, one vamp stayed out. And one's been removed. But still, numbers, numbers. Yeah, he's doing well, isn't he? I like. I would have liked. Surfing this throw, honestly. Was it like this? I did he just block him and then he ended there? I don't know. Seems weird if they were started like that to not surf him, right? Definitely just serve. I mean, he did have five, though. And he was activating them when he was when he was coming for the ball. But yeah, even with five, I guess you don't activate all five of your turn. When there's three, you have to activate all three, though. That's the problem, right? Like, when you've got five, and on defense, you can only activate three, but... Once you're down to three on offense, you have to activate all three every turn. Right, we might be able to turn the corner a bit here. Eh? Blitz this one. 
Here's him, block him. Dodge him off. Ah, oh, okay, so he blitzes him. Might block him as well. Nope. Hmm, I quite like blocking him as well. Because that gets the, this guy through, doesn't it? He's powered. Gears him, I guess it still just gears him. But if he was gazed and he was down, then he could come touch through and stuff. Like, where's the ball going? Hmm. I really like pushing him and punching the game. I mean, on defense, you can just activate no vamps, can't you? Because you can just. Uh, you can screen for a turn or two. Depending on the uh, situation. Double GFI, I guess. Maybe just single. Oh. Oof, I don't like this. Because, like, <laughs> if he fails that, the ball just gets sacked instantly. At least if you move this first. If you fail the, you know, if you make the GFI but then fail that dodge, you still got something. It is, yeah, missing the edge six at the moment, and this tackler, but it's a decent team. First half was wild. The uh, chaos were under the cosh for the whole half, and then somehow made a breakaway play on turn seven. It was pretty cool. But, you know, it was very close to being 1 0 Agravius the first half. Can he surf? It's the question. You can blitz one and have these two filled. But can you fill both of these? <laughs> Probably not. Who's this? It's Purple Chest. Hello. He's not speaking. Yeah, sidesteps, you'd have to fill in both of these, yeah. That's what makes it tricky. Tricky, tricky, tricky. And like, resource intensive and everything, isn't it? It's, it's not. It's not Afternoon, Jim. Hello! You sound like you're flagging a little bit. I know live games test your patience. I thought I'd come in in case this hits overtime. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I've, I've actually got a pin in my eye at the moment. I've been rubbing my eye a lot. <laughs> rubbing one out. And uh, <laughs> that's that's probably not healthy. Yeah, I'm a little bit tired. It's been four hours now. You know, uh, it's... It's, it's not impossible, this, is it, now? It's just got two more squares to fill. I mean, it's... Do you move the vampire and then try a couple of three pluses through to fill them, or do you try and go around the outside like a buffalo girl? <laughs> Difficult, isn't it? It is, yeah. I think you have to try and move the vampire. 
I mean, that's two three pluses and you probably just don't even try right you probably don't even try you probably just uh try to get power him get the guard in here and then or not guard yeah there's a there's a good argument for just getting heavily in front of it isn't there and power there and then get something behind i don't know he has left himself a one die and the two people available to try it jim i i wonder if he'll try this one die He does have four rerolls to put into this. A one die and two three pluses, and the ball carrier is served. He hasn't really got people left to do it now, though, does he? <laughs> like, he hasn't got. The, yeah, the, the tackler left. from the rear comes and gives the one assist on the vamp to move it on one die. And then the two remaining beasts go through. He's definitely not doing it, though. Oh, I think he might regret that. That's a three plus to move it, and then two more three pluses, and you surf the ball carrier. And I don't think there's any coming back from that. And I think that would have been a win. And with four rerolls in the bank, I would be trying it. Yeah, it was, it was interesting. Oh. Well, he rolls a double one, so... <laughs> yeah, those don't help me many plans, I find. <laughs> Mostly those are things I try and avoid. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think any plan... I don't think any plan survives a, a snake. Yeah, I think Dog to the Dog and Razzle both liked the surf plan. Mm. Yeah, it was just, it was hard, wasn't it? It was hard with like... It was hard. It was definitely not an easy make. Like I said, basically three three pluses needed to work in your favour. Um, and they probably wouldn't have done, but I'd have loved to have seen him try it. That felt a very passive defence to me, mm. when such a beautiful off defence was there. So we are going to see most likely in overtime. Chaos can return in two, can't they? They've got the, the tools to do it, but Vamp's very hot on defence. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I guess he was. I guess he was going to move him around and then move him around, but it was hard, right? This was going to have to have 3-2-2 or something to get around. Ah, uh, not moving the pro Vamp, just going all the long way around, you think, Jay? Okay, yeah, maybe. It was a lot of dice, though. I mean, that was a lot of dice, too. I think I preferred just moving it on a three and then the two three pluses. I thought that made a bit more sense to me, but it certainly well, wasn't easy, is, but I thought it was worth going for. It's not two three pluses, right? There's still some GFIs and stuff. Yeah, like a couple of GFIs in there as well. Um, I don't count two pluses, you know that, Jim. That's free movement. That's <laughs> true, yeah. <laughs> well, I think like an elf. When did an elf ever get afraid of a two plus? Mm, I'm terrified of them. <laughs> That's why I'm advising you to think like an elf, my friend. No, no, I can't. Um, would you ever pick Stan Firm instead of Size of Levan? No. No. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> um, Do you want yeah. reasons? I mean, there's like so many. <laughs> yeah, it's like. It's funny because, like, the. To be fair, vampires are are interesting in that they are like strong boys. Because generally, the players yeah. that want sidestep are like the agile boys, and the yeah. guys who want stand firm are the strong boys. So it kind of fits yeah. with who gets access anyway. So I generally don't like you know sidestep on a noble warrior or stand firm on a high elf catcher, things like that, because they yeah, don't want the opposite anyway. Vampires yeah. are interesting in that they're both, <laughs> right? They are both, but I still think just sidestep is. It's just kind of mostly. Different. I mean, the, the big difference is do you want it up in your face causing you problems? And if the answer is no, give it sidestep. So, vampires, elves, gutter runners, you don't want them up in your face where they can do horrible things to you. Whereas, strong things, it doesn't really matter where they are. You know, they're just strong things. They need lots of assists for you to hit them. So, they're usually better staying put where you want them as the block that they are. I mean, hence the name blocker. Mm. It's not just for hitting things, it's for blocking space in my head. Hmm. So I agree, I don't think of them as strong things. I think of them as strong agile things, with the emphasis on the agile things. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we've done it so many times in our in there's no need. Let, let's just try and focus on the game. I think that's the best thing. The game and game related things. Yeah, and it's it's more complex and nuanced than people think, because I'm not a simplistic cartoon character. <laughs> I see a lot of value in that tactic. You know, I have a complex view and it's very boring to talk about it. We've done it a thousand times. Yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> On the other hand, of course, in our ancient there are cartoon characters and they just think yes. that is terrible. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I could lean into the meme if you want. Oh, goodness, it's killing Blood, blood Bowl. <laughs> Focusing on the game in this channel with my reputation. Yeah, you're gonna get two scoring threats, maybe, maybe just one. I I would be pushing for three here, but he doesn't seem to be. Yeah, it's really risky, right? If you go for the three, because you've got you've got to push this way, haven't you? And then uh, but the vamps have no way. have no have no recourse. They have one turn, so they're not. There is no counter score threat. So you can go, ah, I'm going to use the expression, Jim, because I am old. Balls to the wall on this one, can't you? Um, oh, the ball carrier, you can get a full thing, look. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You can double geofire the carrier here. That's yes. Interesting. It is interesting. Unfortunately, you would then have your cage based with a vampire on one corner, which I think is not great. <laughs> Um, from you know my memory of vampires, that's bad. Yep. But you know, like I said, there's no counter scoring threat. So at least having the ball that far down the field means when it does go on the ground, it's that much nearer you picking it up and scoring with it. Mm. Sometimes against vamps, you'd have to think about that's that that way because you know agility six vamps will go just where the hell they want. Yeah, that's the thing. I think if he could have got more scoring threats, then I think. Uh... Scoring That's a very lazy people. square. <laughs> I think get you know get the scoring threats and get the ball out of range. Like keep the ball out of range this turn and like have two or three scoring threats. But um, yeah, yeah, this looks a bit. Oh, we've got a removal though. So there you go. Top top quality chaos player there. That gets his warrior through wonderfully well. Perfect play. Just make a removal. Yeah, I've spotted. A little flaw in yeah, this cage, Jim. He could have geified there. That that removal is what he needed, right? Because he could have geified there, and then the these these come up and fill these two. So you've still got like a cage. Like that was really weird to not. Yeah, very. And actually, that warrior that sat on the AG6 only moved three to go there. I'd be moving him now, and filling him in where this beastman's going, mm. alongside the beastman. Um. Because the more in that area, the better. And, and just nudging that AG6, it's not really doing anything. So I guess he wanted to sit on the wrestle and on the downed piece behind him. Yeah. And I guess that's sort of doing some work. So fair enough. It's holding two pieces in place. It's just not holding the AG6 at all, is it? Well, here we go. The, the one he had to gaze is gazed, and now he's got an instant 2D on the ball with tackle. But at least the push direction is bad. Oh, no, it's yeah, it's, it's, and the, it's a perfect push direction. <laughs> but there's plenty of things around that might feasibly be able to pick it up and do something with it, Jim. So it's kind of a failure in the right place, if you see mm. what I mean. The problem is, of course, sometimes that's all you can do. There's an ad six ready to scoop it up, though. Yeah, <laughs> that, I, I'd noticed that, but hey, he's marked it. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's nice. Look, mm, now you can choose where it goes. Very sexy, that. I favour pushing the beastman up by the vampire and using the middle square. No, he's still coming out that same square. Yeah, okay. Seems pointless though. Yeah. Well, no. no, I think it was because he could have pushed him through the middle square and bitten him if it was uh, bloodlusted. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. 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 Really nice. Really nice. And the AG6 has it away. Okay. The, I. Why? Hmm. Surely you have to punt it. If you leave it there, he's just going to get smashed by the tackle, Mighty Blow. Oh, and then he's... Screen him. Yeah, no, you just punt it. <laughs> he still gets smashed by the tackle, Mighty <laughs> Blow, but now there's no chance of the score afterwards. Exactly, right? I think there's that little chance of the score any anyway. I think it's better to just screen him so he doesn't get smashed. <laughs> he did have another vamp, didn't he? Which was of less need to not get smashed. So, you might be right, Jim. You might be right. You've got a claw bomber here, so you can just punch this guy with him. And then this guy can come around. Oh, no, he can't. So you can punch him. You can punch him. And you can punch him. And then you can claw bomb his edge six even. Yeah. That's. I think that's what I'd be trying to do. It's such a key piece. Yeah. And actually, you can do it with just a push from the warrior. You don't need the power, do you? So... I think it's a fairly simple plan to make that happen. 
Yep. And at least the ball isn't going to worry anyone because it's completely out of range, so no one just needs to worry about it at all. Just get on with killing stuff. Yeah. Yeah, you do have to contend with the bloodlust. Yeah, that was yes. Really, really yes. Good bloodlust thing. Yeah, completely. Yeah, no, the, the, the bloodlust positioning was really, really nice. Well, I don't like moving him first because he's your backup if you don't. And I think the punt is what I'd have done. I know what Jim means about screening him. And it was a pro vamp to maybe counter the bloodlust, but still it's, yeah. It was probably safest done this way. Yeah. In terms of game equity. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Because like, so there's a lot of your game equity is, is tied up in having this edge six guy on the pitch. Is it though? I mean... <sighs> They've still got two rerolls. That's a really finite resource for the vampires, Jim. Really Whether attacking or defending, they just need to get, say, three vampires through into overtime with those two rerolls, and you'd back them if they've got the ball to score. Oh, a blockless block. Yeah, that was a choice. I mean, it's, it's, it's what I, I think it's what you have to do. Right? Oh, my God. Yeah. Full instant reward. I think that's the right decision too. No, you could have put this guy in and then hit him with him. I don't think you trust the regen there. I think you oh, throw the yeah. apo and make sure. Yeah, but the app, he's, he's done it anyway. No, he hasn't, he hasn't hit him. Oh, he can run around this way. Yeah. Okay. Well, it was better to hit the rest of them, I'm sure. Bang, bang. There we go, pile on, instant. Oh, I don't like that, Jim. I expect you made to wait four or even five seconds oh. at least before they pile on. Glorious. Oh, he regens. Disgusting. Yeah, gets the cows with that 50%. Disgusting. So now that we know that Jim was definitely right and we should have screened the AG6. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But then, you know, maybe, maybe like this guy could have 4 3 in the end zone. Oh, in fact, no, he's, he's unmarked, right? So he could have one, two, three, four, five, six, three plus, um, four or five plus, three plus, and then um, four, three, two, two. Like it, it would, it would have been a chance, right? It would have been. A it chance. would. I, I liked the punt. I really did. I thought it was the right move. Yeah. Um, but it did mean that that AG6 was was hostage to the hit. It took the hit, and it tanked it. That's um, that's everything was right there. What we should do, though, it strikes me, is do at least one, not a full chalice, but one cast, maybe, where we unironically just do results-based analysis constantly. <laughs> That'd be pretty good, yeah. That would be pretty good. That would be pretty good. <laughs> God. I'm, gonna, no, I'm not, I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say it. Yeah, we could. It would be funny. I'm getting quite good now at thinking before I talk sometimes. Usually once a day, I'll think before I speak. It's pretty good. That's it's great. Yeah. <laughs> well, agreed. This is the toss, but that's not too bad, right? Vamps on defense. It just means it's fine. The, uh, yeah, all started close at your opponent's end zone, really. <laughs> I, I don't think it would have particularly upset him. I think you'd still rather have it in hand, but it's fine as vampires, isn't it? Yeah. Indeed, Russell, indeed, indeed. I've gone years without thinking before I speak. <laughs> and uh, the vamps up numbers, of course. Yeah. Only by one, but, you know, you don't imagine that will stay the same after the first turn, <laughs> but yeah. you know, at this exact moment. And in terms of quality, like, you know, there they, they aren't a good, there's not a good player being replaced with the vamps. Like, you know, it's not like as if they were down the right six and replaced them with a throw. So they have the full quality, you know, my, only minus a DP. But then obviously the the chaos are missing their absolute worst player. So yes, they're not going to mind. Uh, good question from Physic. He takes that there's no D and D today at this time of the day. I'm presuming that's correct. Yep, correct. Dimmy, Dimmy's face feels like it was glassed. <laughs> he said so. Yep, there was never there was never going to be anyone today because of Dimmy, the champ. The there is, if you don't mind me mentioning it, a one world, one blood bowl later, if Ooh. that's your tipple. Oh, very exciting. Tales from a small island. Yep. Or small land, maybe. So there's Switzerland and 
Malta, Malta and Ireland. Yeah, Malta. I would, I would have got there. I would have got there, PC. I knew there was ah, Ireland. Ah, sorry. Unforgiven Ireland, not in real life. No, um, not in real life. And uh, Strider 84 and yep. a Malteser. The Malteser Giza Janinu. Hmm. There you go. Quick uh, the, the topic is that playing Blood Bowl in small communities. Hmm. I mean, largely, I think we're going to hear the story of Irish Blood Bowl because I hear you will struggle to shut Unforgiven up about his <laughs> uh, indelible role in setting Ireland up as a Blood Bowl superpower. Hmm. But, you know, Malta recently hosted a Euro Bowl, and there's only about five of them. <laughs> and Strider 84 has been captain of Switzerland since God was a lad. <laughs> so I'm not sure there is anyone else in Switzerland that plays NAF. So I just thought that would be an interesting thing to talk to, people that come from small countries but play Blood Bowl. Mm. Yeah, Kaelon did say that. I mean, that is that is going to be whew, Clash of the Titans, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Unforgiven versus PC. <laughs> well, I mean, this, I mean, like the America one, Jim, I mean, I will try and come in with the odd question and the odd joke, but it's it's an area where I don't know very much, so I really can just sit back and ask some good questions and hope they have lots to say. Mm. And if they don't, then obviously I have to try and fill the dead air, but it usually is quite chilled for me, these sorts of ones. <laughs> I don't know if you were watching some stream where I was, uh, I was hilarious when I said, uh, Somebody said they weren't as good as... Oh, it was Spokebearer, I think. said he's not as good at filling dead air as Kalon. And I said a pneumatic drill isn't as good at filling dead air. <laughs> <laughs> well, Kalon does have the gift of the gap. He has that very um, easy, practised, sort of just flowing ability to fill space with noise. Mm. Some of which is words with sense. Yeah, rarely. And rare occasion. <laughs> Oh, I was going to say, yeah, you want him there, and now you can pile on or like knock, knock, yep. knock down. Yeah, it's all nice and safe to do some uh, some hideous, horrible things. So he does, and instantly the removal pays off. So yeah. now we are up numbers as the chaos. Four. Ten plays nine. There you go. But no knock down there. Yeah, the cost of that is no secondary hit on this one. So only a 55% for the... Oh, no, 75%, isn't it? Because uh, did have wrestle. Could have taken him down with that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, there's another removal there. <laughs> yep. Yep. Oh. Right, so the vamps. Talk about diminishing resources. Not only are they low on rerolls and also low on the equity. you can't imagine the... Uh, the two they do have is going to last them until the end of this uh, overtime if it reaches that far. But now also getting low on players, Jim. How aggressive do they have to be? Well, as Teddy KGB would say, very aggressive. Yeah, they have to just go all in. I mean, this turn, there is two chaos on the ground. That sort of gives some hope, maybe. Pretty good, yeah. The double pile on. Add six can hit the ball any turn he wants, but he hasn't got tackle, so you've got to try and engineer multiple gazes to get the tackle through. But it's it's tricky, isn't it? Like just the actual yeah. blocking of squares of these down players is is tough. Yeah, you can get up the left hand flank with the right gaze, but with again with something without tackle, it looks like that's what he's going for, though. solves that problem. How hasn't he blocked the square he'd want to go through? I don't know what his plan he might be going the edge six. In which case it doesn't matter, does it? <laughs> well, he's in what square you just go where you want. Yeah he just he just runs all the way through here. Oh I see we're hypno cheating everything. Yeah. Very aggressive. Well I mean I think it's the right play Jim like I said, diminishing resources. You've got to go whilst you've got something to go with. Yep. Problem is, you'd really want to go with a tackle rather than the yeah, edge six. Don't you? Add six could gaze here, actually. Three, four, five, six. The edge six could gaze there, and then you can hit with the move seven. 
Yep. Yeah, that's better, isn't it? There's two plus gears. Oh, Flux Streamer. Maybe the Ad 6 should have gone in there to do this gears because this one had a minus one, right? So maybe this should have been a four plus gears. Maybe that should have been done by the Ad 6. So here we go. Hit without tackle. Yeah, it's just too short for him. Maybe he should have been like back in the centre or something. Yeah, maybe. Perhaps the tackle should have been on that central square, not the AG6. Yeah, puts the re-roll in, but no joy. Hmm. Yep. I think he's on in 45 minutes. Uh, Razzlestone. Oh, no, in, in an hour and 45. Okay. And say Razzlestone can answer because he's playing. Yeah, I just needed the tackle. I, it's funny because I, I, you know, I hate to brag how absolutely fantastic I am at commentary, but I did say <laughs> mm. <laughs> the only having the one tackler. Like you know, it seems okay because there's only a couple of dodges on this team, but it's just super important for vampires to have. To yeah, I, I heard right at the start. I thought it was excellent commentary, Jim. Uh, very good analysis. The idea that, that yes, having one tackler is is weak, um, particularly when you're fairly certain they'll be carrying on the dodge piece therefore to take that down he's going to take tackle and if you've only got one where it is where it is becomes incredibly vital every single turn mm. as we saw that turn lovely assault but a mispositioned tackle piece meant no glory on the ball mm. do we go for an uphill surf of the vampire <laughs> he, could, he, could, he could hit him there then hit him there and then uphill surf him but i think that's a bit ludicrous yeah, I think the more pressing problem is the ball carrier and friends on the sidestep vampires. Yeah, I like fucking off over here a lot. Yeah. A lot. It did it in the first half as well. You can just literally blitz him, hand off, and you're away. Like, <laughs> Well, there's nothing to stop him just dodging off, is there? He is AG4 with dodge and not on tackle, as we said. That's a 1 in 36 fail. Yeah. There's a beastman you're probably throwing under the bus to hold two vamps in place. That's fine. And your blitz comes on this wrestle... Um, yeah. Wrestle Thrall hung out to dry all by himself. Yeah. Literally. Giving you I'm... half the field to run into. I think it's the right play. Yeah, it's, it's what Toto Freas did in the first half. And, and Agrelius, you know, by coming balls to the wall here, he's left it on again. Yeah, I, mean, I didn't like that tackler coming in no. to where everything else was, Jim. No. I thought it should have stayed back behind that wrestle piece. Yeah. yeah keeping the chaos yeah, honest. Yeah. Yeah, like could have gazed this tackler, right? You could have come in and gazed this tackler. Ooh, it's a good job he didn't dodge off with that snake. The first thing he saw. Yeah. Well, I mean, the the block's just better than dodging. Him, yeah. Isn't it? So. Yeah. But that really unlucky dub skull because you really want to uh, really want to do the handoff this time. Yeah. I guess now, obviously, now you just don't hand off. You just move yes. Up here and... You can still put that beastman in range, and yeah. you've still got your claw pommer on the ground that can claw pom the wrestle piece. Yeah. But you've just now you've not got much of a screen left. Get wrestled, sunshine. Wow. It's the wrong turn for the dice to fall apart, isn't it? Yep. It's all right though. You still you still get to move this guy over here completely unmolestable. Well, the GFI. Yeah, but the ball probably now has to drop back, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Just drop back with the ball. Yeah. Oh, I, I, in my. Blood, I feel he's risking this, Jim. I think that moves to Lens Mens that the ball's not dropping back. Because mm, you can hand off from marking this guy. Yeah, hand off here yep. is pretty good. You just win six. Three, three plus, points. you win. Yeah. Yeah. Unstoppably. Well, actually, not unstoppably. Look at this. By moving him in here, look at this. Oh, yeah. No, nice. <laughs> Makes the three plus. So now this I like that. Oh. Big balls play. This is horrible now. This is actually horrible. Because he's going to stop right there thinking, I'm out of range, look. I can yeah. be based, but I can't be blitzed. <laughs> but you can, Sunshine. You so can. Yeah. And even um, if he GFIs, you can chain him again, right? Because you can punch him here with the first one and then punch so him the there. So the beastman has to now uphill two die that vampire just to move yes. it out of place. Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's pretty good. Because the worst that happens is you go down and it's no worse. 
but the best that happens is you move it and if you move it you make it mildly more complex to get the same push but <laughs> only mildly unfortunately yep yeah. yeah. don't follow up <laughs> move it and don't follow up and it's kind of tricky to get that push yeah i mean you could i mean it, you could it's not power, but yeah. you know we can pretend it is he could double power he hasn't even activated him Oof. oh dear no that's wrong Oof. that's just wrong jim isn't it that is wrong yeah correct punch this guy first um because then that cancels that system might do something might not and then i'll go for this oh i don't like this Need a lot of not bloodlusts here, doesn't he? Yeah, I didn't like moving that. All right, here we go. Gets the push. Oh, he's got he's got them based anyway. Okay, so he doesn't even need to hit. He can have another little go here yep. for another push another if he push, wants it. Yeah. Yep, lovely. It's only one die at the moment, but there we are. That makes it two. Yeah, so I didn't like moving these right because they could have assisted instead of Oof. activating a van. That's Gets the push, the but that saves a GFI, and really importantly, gives you a GFI after the hit, Jim. Yep. Which I really like to have. Oh, so yes, this one's quite good, isn't he? Because then you could hit and then GFI back and bite him. Yeah, or you can GFI onto the ball and pick it up. No, I mean, I if, if you roll lost this guy, yeah, 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 this guy, this guy was actually a really good spot, but this this one should have uh, should have been yeah. assisting, I think. Gets his lovely pal. Ball. Have to, Jim. Have to there. Oh, I doesn't catch it. Sorry, he's got to move after this. He's got pro! Pro's it! Yes. Pro! I don't think you risk the move now. Yes. Despite the fact you're on tackle, I don't think, I think you just stay there and take the one die hit. 2D. 2D, he's, yeah, he's going to bring the other beastman in, isn't he? Mm. Oh. Oh, but now he can... That's the, must has to do the GFIs. Has to do them. No! He only, did, he only did one, he couldn't do two. If he if he yeah, he probably had to do a dodge, right? He probably had to do some kind of harder dodge to he had to base him. Surely one more GFI to base the claw pommer would have been good. What if he but as he couldn't get as he couldn't get to the yeah, failing it would be terrible. And as he couldn't get to the agility piece, perhaps yeah. it's fine to stop there. Yeah, that's a good point. At least you know they're not scoring. Yeah, yeah they're not scoring. Two die on the ball carrier, but not scoring. And they've only got two rerolls themselves, Jim. Yeah. So, ooh, we can add. We're, we're going to have a thrall in, ra in range and a vamp in range, so we can do things too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lovely chain to free either the stand firm beast or one of the warriors, isn't there? Yeah. I think or you can push the warrior onto the uh, plus move vamp. Somewhat pointlessly, as it's no tackle versus a blodge step. Yes. And you'd only end up helping him by pushing him where he wants to go. <laughs> yeah, so freeing up this, this stand fern seems okay. One, two, three. Then he could go there or something. We're just going to blitz first. Oof. I think this is okay. I didn't think that needed a reroll, right? Because. Pushing him there because you're not you're not going to be able yeah. to score next turn anyway. So keep your reroll advantage. And whilst it was a tackle hit, it wasn't a mighty blow tackle hit, so it was unlikely to break the armor really. Yeah. Yeah, not blitzing Frackle as well. Yeah, right. Like if you're going to reroll the knockdown, then just put this guy in here, and then also this guy can't move freely afterwards. I know he's got the sure hands and the uh, and the blodge and everything, but... He doesn't have sure feet, and you've used your reroll. Yeah, that's the problem, isn't it? Whereas the other guys have got much more likely knocked down, and then can have a go at picking up late. Vamps, of course, no rerolls, though, Jim. Foolishly used them all up. <laughs> <laughs> uh. This guy can go around and still free this uh, stamp for him. Oh, he's not going to. A safety? Interesting, interesting dropping the safety back. Yeah, it's not bad, is it? It's not bad. It's it's it? fine. There's not much else he could do at the moment. I... I'll just roll the power and then that's the best way to free people up. Having excellent dice does help in most situations, Jim. That that's one of the facts of Blood Bowl. Yep. Yeah, past the ad past the ad six. So he's got three tackles on and I think, yeah, putting a tackle So, did he only catch it on a three? Oh, no. 
and then dodge out on a two two so it's I mean, and you can move one of them anyway you've got a vamp there that can hit one of them off it means he catches on a two yeah hit one off yeah so yeah. i quite like that as a plan yep well but no he's he's releasing him first oh, he's gonna gears him ah uh, release another one Two, three. This is still a bit rubbish at doing it. I guess he's got Pro, so one, two, three, and then GFI. I think that one's going to blitz the tackle off the one that's going to pick up. Isn't it? Because mm. he didn't want to do the two plus off tackle. Yeah, fair. I mean, there's lots of options, isn't there? None of them are really great. <laughs> Pro, Pro gets the gaze to work. They've got a lot better now. Um, it just, yeah. Like, no reroll just makes everything bleh. It really does. Yes, Big Chichi, but this was all like safer and stuff, right? Like, there's no with no rerolls. This is well, he, he's got Pro. But... With only pro, this is very, very dodgy. Oh, and then he did the go for it without the... Um, fails the pro. Yeah, uses just his pro. Having freed up that vampire midfield, it never went anywhere, which I think is poor. Yeah. But now, so perhaps he was throwing to it to try and just scoot off and win. But yeah, I think so. I think so. I think you just blitz blitz this guy, don't you? And then one, two, three, four, five. Well, one, two, three, four, five, six. GFF. Um, the one on the sideline can get round between next to the ball in front of the vampire, and then the agility one can blitz the vampire, moving it and still step onto the ball without any GFIs um, to pick up. But then, of course, the two GFIs don't take you to score. It's it's interesting. Oh no, you could score, yeah, okay, you can score that way, yeah, yeah, so move him around then, one, two, three, four, five, six, GFI, GFI, yeah, that's pretty good, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty good. So the one on the side is the support, and then the other one has to dodge off after either powering or moving the vampire, but then, yeah, on a pickup and two GFI scores and wins. Yeah. That's closer, isn't it? Adding the GFI, but it makes the pickup easy. Hmm. Hmm, that's interesting. I, I don't know which is better. I guess this is good in that you've got him, but you can have him on there anyway. Yeah, and you, it, this has a better fail state, doesn't it? Surely, with another beastman right next to the ball. Yeah. That's what he's doing. He could go after blitzing the throw. Anyway. Gets the pal. Oh, this is really Yes. Good. Oh. <laughs> Beautiful. Oh. And now it's just three two pluses to win the game. Uh, yeah, nearly. Oh! Makes the first one, makes the second one. Does he even GFI now? Does he even do it? Yep, he does. There's a vampire nearby, I think you have to. Yeah. Even without tackle, yeah. I think that. he's dropping the GG. Yeah. Boom! Oof. There you are. We got there. We got there, Jim. Oh, that was a really cool game again. That's amazing. Doing that was two, fun. Yeah, two live games and they were both actually fun. Unbelievable. You sent out the back signal. I could hear you flagging. <laughs> having been, I've been um, cleaning the pond. Oh. So I've been popping in and out on breaks and hearing a bit of the commentary and I could hear you flagging. I thought, oh, I'm taking a break. I'll give Jim some company. In what was a good, fun game of Blood Bowl. Thank you very much, PC. And yep, it was really, really good, really fun. And uh, Absolute pleasure. Yeah, glorious. So there you go. Commiserations, Agrelius. Congratulations. Great Toto Frius. Mm. Uh, it is a bit of a shame, isn't it? Agrelius, I thought, played really well. And what a lovely, lovely team. Um, but vampires, you know, they, they just don't ever seem to get it finally done, do they? No matter how beautiful they are. That's a good point. And uh, thanks for watching, everyone. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And stay fantastic. <laughs>